Uh, as the Minister said, um, Australian farmers currently have uniformly the most positive incomes in around about 30 years. The combined effects of good seasonal conditions across Australia, complying with solid commodity prices, are providing very good returns for farmers. This presents one of the best opportunities in a generation for farmers to have a re-look at their farm business plans and look at how they might plan for the future. For those two-thirds of farmers who don't have a farm business plan, it would be a very good time to start writing one. Now, the theme for this year's conference is Future Landscapes. It's about how the environment in which our industries operate, be it economic, social, climactic, ecological, how that will look in the future and how our industries will shape that environment and how that environment will shape them. It's about positioning our industries for the prospects, the uncertainties and the risks looking forward. Over the course of the conference, I hope you'll take the opportunities to explore these issues in some depth. For now, I just want to touch on three things. First, the prospects for our farming, fisheries and forestry industries hinge on sound economic management globally. How Europe manages its way through the economic difficulties and developing countries manage their economic transitions will determine the shape of the world environment over the next five years. Second, in preparing for the future, amongst other things, producers need to manage a range of risks, including economic uncertainty, climate variability and sovereign risk. And third, I want to look at to the long-term horizon, how our industries go about making their plans for the future and how they position themselves for the challenges over the next 40 years. But let's start with the outlook for the global economy. This slide shows world economic growth over the past decade and over our projection period. As shown here, we have seen sound economic progress globally over the last two years since the financial crisis in 2009, with particularly strong growth in 2010. In 2011, we saw some easing of the rate of growth uh, off the back of economic difficulties in developed countries and some slowing of growth in developing countries. While we believe, or perhaps hope, that hard economic decisions have been made and will continue to be made in Europe, and that will uh, avert the crisis, it won't be without some economic pain. Reduced, reduced government expenditure as a consequence of tighter fiscal controls combined with weak consumer demand are likely to see a further easing of world economic growth this year. For our medium term forecasts, we have an assumption of world economic growth rates of around about 4% per year. Now for those doing scenario planning, there is probably more downside risk to the global economic growth rate over the next few years than upside risk. For example, if we saw a significant downturn in economic activity similar to the uh, recession we saw in 2009, that could cut some of our commodity price forecasts by around about 15 to 20%. And most of the strength over the medium term outlook is expected to be in developing countries particularly in Asia. Developing countries in Asia now take around about a half of our agricultural exports, up from around about a third a decade ago. For fisheries and forestry exports, those developing countries in Asia are even more dominant. We expect economic growth in these countries to be sustained at seven to eight percent a year over the medium term. And it is this growth that will underpin our demand for commodities. Now for China, economic growth continues to be underpinned by strong domestic demand with some softening of export demand. Over the medium term, we see some difficulties for China in rebalancing their economy away from exports and towards stronger domestic demand, which will see GDP growth being a more subdued 8% a year, according to our assumptions. I'd note overnight that the Chinese leadership have indicated an even softer growth rate than that being their target at 7.5% a year. Also with significant foreign reserves in China, uh, they also have a part to play in uh, assisting European recovery, uh, particularly since China is very dependent on Europe for its exports. A 
And for Australia, economic conditions remain sound, although continue to be driven uh, by strong commodity exports, particularly mining. Uh, we have assumed for our forecast a growth rate for Australia of around about 3% a year. The risks are that a softening of global demand would have consequences for the Australian economy. For interest rates, we expect them to remain close to their current levels in the short term, but to gradually rise over the projection period. This reflects an expected, rising, uh, incre or, uh, expected rise in global interest rates over this period, but also reflects efforts to keep inflationary pressures under control in Australia. The rising interest rates will create some upward pressure on borrowing costs for farmers, fishers and forestries. In terms of uh, the sector itself, the moderate outlook for a global economy will underpin a real value of agriculture, fisheries and forestry remaining at about $50 billion in real term over the medium term. We also see the real value of exports being around $38 to $39 billion over the next five years. We expect a general easing of commodity prices in real terms over this period following recent highs. Continued livestock, herd and flock rebuilding is expected over the next few years with reduced wheat areas, but some expansion in barley and canola areas. Now these changes in relative commodities reflects the relative returns between alternative crops and, and livestock. In terms of the exchange rate, with continued strong demand for commodities in our region, we see the exchange rate remaining at close to parity with the US dollar over the medium term. But as always, there is likely to be some volatility over this period, which is difficult to predict. Now, the link between the exchange rate and commodities is well known. Higher exchange rates have occurred in periods of commodity export growth and lower exchange rates during periods of lower export growth. Historically, it is agricultural commodities that have driven these changes. However, the exchange rate strength since the mid-2000s has been associated with the mining boom, with minerals and energy exports growing by over 16% a year, while farm, fishing and forestry exports have been flat. Whereas in the past, the exchange rate provided some buffering for Australian farmers by moving in line with global returns, the dominance of the minerals and energy exports in our commodity trade has broken that nexus. The implication of this is that farmers need to think more carefully about exchange rate risks into the future, as there is a possibility of a high Australian dollar coinciding with low global agricultural prices, which would create a negative double whammy on Australian farm returns. Now, so far I've mentioned some of the economic uncertainties that are facing Australian farmers, fishers and foresters over the medium term. I now want to touch on two other uncertainties for the medium term, which are the climate and policy changes. 